Okay, so it's it's two o'clock. Uh, let me introduce the session. So welcome everyone. We are in the uh, very last day of our meeting. Uh, we have three talks now, three 15 minute talks. Uh, I will try to be strict with the timing. So if you are agree, we can start this uh, one past two. So let me introduce you, Nida, Neda. Uh, I won't try to pronounce this surname, sorry, from the Institute of for Research yeah. and Fundamental Science. So the stage is yours, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So hello everybody, uh, my name is Neda Rafiul Hosseini and uh, I would like to talk uh, for you about the thermal conductivity of the cell membrane. So uh, all of us are aware of the importance of temperature in chemical and biochemical reactions and uh, in biological processes as well, but uh, we might have thought less about the thermal gradient or heat transport at the cellular level. So I will start with a very nice application of this uh, field. Uh, if you assume that uh, uh, we want to have a selective uh, therapeutic method for cancer therapy, um, you can uh, refer to this uh, very nice uh, paper, which is uh, a recent experimental paper in this field. And uh, uh, the picture here be, um, at the bottom show you um, some nanoparticles, actually they are called up-converting nanoparticles that uh, produce heat after being radiated by an external uh, source. So uh, these nanoparticles are dispersed, um, actually they are covered by a lipid bilayer and they are dispersed in water and there, uh, there is a thermocouple in the water um, that uh, measure the temperature of the water uh, and solvent environment. So um, uh, by, uh, give, by, by giving radiation, these nanoparticles, they produce heat and we expect that this heat uh, transports through the bilayer and um, um, be transported to the water, uh, to the environment. And this way they can measure the thermal conductivity of the lipid bilayer. Um, actually, it's interesting that they found, uh, found that uh, thermal conductivity of the bilayer is a function of power density of the source. And at a specific threshold, uh, they see the lowest possible thermal conductivity of the lipid bilayer. And it means that uh, lipid bilayer acts as a thermal barrier uh, in this uh, threshold, at this threshold. But after that, uh, it, uh, has, uh, it shows a higher thermal conductivity and can uh, transport heat uh, very well. So uh, if you want to look at, from an application point of view, we can say that without having any understanding of the behavior of a membrane in thermal transport, we cannot uh, get a high efficiency uh, in this method. So uh, with this introduction, I will jump into the um, computation, uh, computational studies that are done before. And actually one of them um, is uh, done by muller Palev and um, uh, actually, it's the base of uh, uh, the method that we use in, uh, in our study. Um, uh, Muller uh, have um, devised uh, an algorithm, uh, actually a, a reverse non-equilibrium molecular dynamics algorithm, to compute uh, thermal conductivity through a um, um, biological membrane. And as you can see in the right-hand side, uh, this is the simulation box. Uh, there are two lipid bilayers parallel to each other, and uh, there are water molecules in between the bilayers and at the top and bottom of the box. Um, so I will explain the Muller alg algorithm in the next few slides in more details, but I just want to um, mention uh, some of the findings of this um, work that they calculated the thermal conductivity profile uh, very locally 
and this is what um, someone cannot do in experiment and only in computation, uh, it's possible. And they found them that, uh, very uh, low drops in uh, thermal conductivity profile at the interface between two lipids and also between water and lipid head groups. And I will uh, come back to this in uh, the next few slides. Okay, I um, used a method uh, that I explained for you, a reverse non-equilibrium molecular dynamics, and why it is called reverse. Uh, because actually in experiment, uh, we have a cause and a effect, an effect. So the cause is usually a temperature gradient in um, thermal conductivity field. Uh, we have a temperature gradient, and, and as a result of that gradient, we have a heat flux throughout the system. But here, we uh, do the reverse. We impose a heat flux to the system and we uh, can calculate or actually obtain a temperature gradient that let us calculate thermal conductivity using the Fourier uh, formula. So um, here you can see our simulation box in the right hand side and I can explain for you the Muller pallet algorithm in detail. Actually, we have uh, two membranes parallel to each other, as I explained to you, and we divided the whole box in the Z direction into uh, several boxes or several slabs. Uh, we did it in 100 slabs, and um, the middle uh, slab or middle layer of our box uh, will be the hot region, and the two uh, upper and lower parts will be the cold region. So there is a reason to do like this because of the parity boundary condition in uh, the direction of X and Z axis. So uh, we um, create an energy exchange this way. Uh, first, we explore in the middle layer the coldest particles and we uh, try to exchange their velocity with the velocity of the high hottest particles in the um, layers uh, in the upper or lower parts of the box. So this way, uh, we create a non-physical heat flow from the cold to the hot region because we are um, actually exchanging energy in this way, which is not uh, usual in nature. But uh, after a while, uh, we uh, reach to a steady state in which a physical heat flow will be created and will be formed through the membrane and the rate of physical and non-physical heat flows uh, become somehow equal. So you can see in the bottom uh, plot that after a while, after starting our NEMD algorithm, we reach to this steady state. Uh, actually, the exchange rate that uh, we use here is 0.1 picosecond and we use LAMPS molecular dynamics package to do our simulations. Uh, here you can see that the density profile... Excuse me, may I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, in the previous slide, um, mm -hmm. in the direction of the uh, temperature gradient, um, mm -hmm. do you use uh, periodic boundary condition here? In the direction of temperature gradient? You mean in the Z direction? Is yes. That... Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, then the, the, the hot uh, end of the box uh, is periodically mm -hmm. bound to the cold end of the box. Am I right? Uh, can you ask again? So if a particle exits in the, uh, uh, through the boundary which is hot, uh, mm -hmm. it will re-enter the box from the boundary which is cold. Am I right? Uh, the boundary of the box? Uh, actually, I don't get your question well. Uh, well, uh, so, okay. I assume that it is periodic, then, as you tell. Uh, so could you get a mm. Maybe if it looks a quite technical question, you could go ahead and maybe ask later. Yeah, okay. yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, you, here in this uh, figure, you see the, uh, temp, uh, the density profiles of the water and lipid. I show the density of water with the dashed blue line and the density of lipid with the yellow line um, through the uh, Z direction. So here is the slab number and here is the density. And um, after, um, uh, yeah, after imposing the heat flux to the system and creation of these two um, heat uh, flows, uh, we got a temperature profile like this. 
uh, which shows that, um, well, if we compare temperature profile with the density profile, it uh, provides us with this information that we are always above the phase transition temperature of the lipids, that is the 314 uh, Kelvin. Okay. Uh, we uh, looked into different model membranes uh, for specifically for uh, membranes with. Uh, Neda, so, no, I, Neda, sorry, I had a question for you. The yeah. uh, the phase transition temperature of, of the lipid you said uh, is three fourteen. Exactly for from, the PPC. Yeah. From from experiments or from force field. Um, okay, it's a very good question, but. Uh, yeah, actually, it is mentioned in the literature uh, in computational works. So I assume that it's um, yeah, it's from computational. Uh, okay, yeah. because the, the two may not be the same. Huh? Exactly. Yeah, oh, you're right. Okay. okay. Uh, they don't match exactly. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. which force field uh, did you use? We use Charman. Uh, Charman, and for water, also Charman. SPE. Yeah, SPE. SPCE. SPCE. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we, uh, yeah, we looked at four uh, different concentrations of cholesterol in membrane because we know that cholesterol has a very significant role in the uh, membrane composition, and uh, it was uh, and has has not been investigated so far. Uh, we also know that thermal conductivity is a structure dependent property. So we we get uh, we guess that. Uh, we might uh, have found an interesting relation between this uh, inclusion of cholesterol into the membrane and change in the membrane structure and as a result in membrane thermal conductivity. So the model membrane we use here is DPPC lipid uh, molecules with uh, uh, different concentrations of cholesterol. And in all the membranes, we have uh, 36 lipid molecules in each left leaflet. So our results um, suggest that there is a, an, a decrease in the area per lipid of the of the molecule of the lipid bilayer as a as a function of uh, cholesterol concentration, and uh, this is somehow in correlation with the increase in the thermal conductivity. So yeah, so a decrease in area per lipid and an increase in thermal conductivity as a, a function of uh, cholesterol concentration. Uh, and this is uh, interesting for us because we also uh, refer to the previous studies and we saw this similar uh, result in uh, this paper previously. Uh, actually, they investigated different archaeal lipid membranes and uh, they saw that in the uh, type of archaea that uh, has a, as a lower um, area per lipid, the thermal conductivity is higher at two different temperatures, actually. Uh, and uh, what actually I uh, understood uh, from this seminar two days ago from Ali Rajapur's um, uh, presentation, I understood that um, they, uh, they, they looked at the density of water around some nanoparticles and they saw an increase in thermal conductivity where uh, they have um, a higher concentration of water, so a higher density of water. And uh, we also um, know from the literature that uh, inclusion of cholesterol has a, a, an effect on the hydration of the lipid uh, head groups. And uh, the more the concentration of cholesterol in membrane, the more hydrated the lipid head groups. So uh, actually it came to our mind that, okay, if Muller suggests that there is a very uh, high drop in thermal conductivity in the interface of uh, water lipid, so we can um, see this in our simulation and we can test if we get a higher density of water near the lipid head groups. And that, so th this way we can uh, somehow explain uh, an, an increase in the thermal conductivity profile. Uh, if we want to compare... Oh, sorry, ne ne Neda, yeah. you should uh, finish in one minute. Uh, so, okay. okay, okay, I'm almost uh, finished. So I just uh, refer to this previous study to compare our results, which is an agreement. And uh, I want to tell you about the uh, important effect of asymmetry of cholesterol in membrane. And um, actually, the um, 
yeah, the way we study this is that we impose the heat flux in two uh, directions, in the forward and backward direction, and uh, we uh, we obtained the same, almost the same results. So the difference was not significant; it was not statistically significant. But in the case that we include a protein, amyloid precursor protein in uh, in the membrane. Uh, and uh, we obtained these forward and backward uh, thermal conductivity coefficients, we saw a statistically significant difference in both systems. And this guide uh, that us that um, maybe this uh, protein or this uh, protein membrane mixture can be a thermal rectifier with the thermal rectification factor calculated this way. So the thermal, thermal rectification factor that we obtain here uh, is in agreement with the values uh, obtained before in the similar studies. So at the end, I would like to show my gratitude to my PhD supervisor, Professor Reza Ishtahadi. I'm also thankful to Ali Hassan Ali for his very good uh, advices through the project and also because he's our collaborator in another project. I'm thankful to the staff uh, of uh, Institute for yeah. Research and Fundamental Sciences in Iran that I did my project. Yeah, and. Uh, and, Nera, uh, we, we are not seeing again your screen. Your screen uh, was locked in the results uh, okay. slide, and also your time is over. So okay, it's just it's just yeah my my uh, last slide. So uh, but yeah, we are I'm not seeing it. your slide. Sorry. Okay, uh, can I um, share it again? Uh, okay, I just try to do it again. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I was in my uh, last slide, which is, uh, yeah, that I want to thank ICTP for uh, hosting me during my last visits. They are the organization in Germany that uh, grant me with a one year research grant and the University of Duisburg Essen in which I'm doing okay. my current projects. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Very nice talk. I'm sorry, there is there is no time for.